Hello children, Krishna ma'am back again with chapter 4 of Hornbill and uh, the name of this chapter is Landscape of the Soul as we learned in the last video. Okay, in the last video we learned about the differences between Asian and Chinese painting or sorry Asian and Western painting and we heard three short stories anecdotes related to Asian and Western painting or to be exact Chinese and Western painting. Now what we will be learn in this video that is the second part, second part of the chapter in which we are going to learn about the concept of Shan Shui and the concept of outsider art. The children what is this Shan Shui? Let's turn to the third page, okay page number three. Now what is this Shan Shui? This is a Chinese word and if we break it okay Shan means mountain and Shui is water. Now what is this mountain water? The mountain water is Yang and Jin in Chinese. Okay we have the same concept in every language in India also we have the same concept of Yang and Jin. Now I will tell you about it later. Now let's come to Yang and Yin. This is the masculine aspect of word that is yang. This is stable, warm and dry going vertical towards heaven. Heaven here means sky. Mountain goes up towards sky. Now what is yin? Yin is the feminine aspect of the universe and this is fluid, cool and moist. As you can see this is totally contrast to yang, totally contrast to the masculine aspect and this is horizontal resting on the earth while yang it goes towards heaven yin it is lying on the earth so these are two contemporary pole of the earth totally uh, opposite to each other and that is the basic of the universe in Hindi sorry in India According to Hindi culture, Hindu culture, uh, this is known as, uh, as you must have heard, Brahma and Maya. The Brahma and Maya is the same concept of this Yang and Yin. If you go to western side, western side also you must have heard of Adam and Eve. So this is the same thing. So basically this is a masculine and feminine aspect which makes the universe and they are uh, two contemporary pole. Now between these two poles there is a third element also. Third element which is very marginal and almost overlooked which is known as middle void. It is uh, so minute that most of the time it is overlooked but this is a very essential part and that is known as spirituality or in Chinese word this is known as Shen Shui or landscape of the soul. If we compare, if we come to our India, it will be easier for you to understand this thing. As today is a yoga day also, it will be more easy for you to relate it also. Uh, all of you must be knowing you are very much aware of the pranayam. Now how do you do this? Inhale and then exhale. But when you inhale your breath, that is inhaling. Okay, pranayam does not occur. When does it occur? When you hold your breath for say one second, two second, one minute, depends. Okay, but holding that breath just for a small period. That small period is known as middle void and that is where the meditation occurs. That is where we get the spirituality. So in the concept of sanctuary or Yen and Jing or you can say Brahma and Maya, the middle void is the spiritual one. That is where the spirituality occurs. And in the Chinese painting, in the Chinese landscape, 
if you i had that uh, painting with me because one of my very very best classmate when i was when i was studying okay she was chinese reporter in a chinese newspaper and she was very good painter i had few paintings with me i thought of showing it to you but somehow i couldn't find it but once you go into the painting you will see all the abstract colors and some white space left there and that white space is known as the middle void middle void which is left for the imagination of the viewer okay where we can use our own imagination we can put our mind to that and we can travel in that space which is spirituality now let's come to the last para this is also where a man finds a fundamental role and he becomes conduit of the communication between the both poles of the universe so here the narrator she says that uh, a man a human being to be exact human being plays a main role plays a very vital role in these two poles okay in these two poles his role is very vital and without a human being without a human being these two poles that is the yang and yang and jin is not possible okay so his role is very vital in that and that is known as the eye of the landscape because in the landscape as in a human body okay we have the role of the eye without the eyes we cannot see anything okay things uh, even though we have all the parts but without eyes we cannot see anything fine so in the same way human being act as the eye of the landscape he has the same role in the landscape of the life of the world of the universe as eyes are in our body so that is about the chapter that is about that sir from the book landscape of the soul ethics and spirituality in chinese painting okay this was the first part now let's come to the second part which is totally different totally different in the way that it is not related to asian art or western art or it is not related to any fine art any form of art but this is related to raw art children what is raw art these days if you go to youtube everything is full of raw art you make with uh, scrap materials anything you can lay your hands on you can give you can make a piece of art out of that and that is raw art so when was it initiated it was initiated way back or it was introduced it was found way back in 1940 by a french painter jean du buffet okay he found the concept he introduced this concept to the world and uh, this concept was known as art brut or art brut now art brut or we can call it self taught art or any art in a naive form okay or you can call it art of you and me means anybody can make it if we have if we have a heart for the art if we have an eye for the art we can create this okay so we call it art brut also or outsider art outsider art means anything which does not fall in the category or uh, in the concept of art you don't have to get a training or people who create this kind of art who make art brut who make outsider art who make raw art okay it's not by any names anybody can make this art if they have a love for the art 
and uh, you don't have to you don't uh, have to need a brush a color or maybe um, a panel a paper that's not needed that's needed in the classical form of art the art which is in real sense art but in this art anything you can pick okay can be a piece of paper can be a piece of cloth can be ice cream sticks or can be anything you just see a beauty in it you can create a piece of art and okay so years back years back years ago many 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 years ago an artist name Nate Chand Nate Chand from uh, okay in his young days he belonged to a place which now falls in Pakistan but later uh, when the partition was made when the partition was made his family moved back to Chandigarh so in Chandigarh he was into a government job in road construction he was an officer there but he had a love for the art so whatever what did he used to do whatever he f- used to find broken bangles he started with that broken bangles pieces of stones pieces of shells can be anything he used to make small piece of art from that and he carried it so i he mm, means openly he could not do that because he was a government employee so what did he do he cleared he went away somewhere in his free time he went to uh, a far place okay a jungle type thing he cleared the space okay that was a vacant space in jungle he cleared it he cleared it he cleaned it and he made it his kingdom okay made it his kingdom and what did he do there he created many pieces of art and uh, in 1980 in 1980 there was a first uh, first time it was inaugurated officially that time it, it, it's a long story how it was discovered by people and how it was okay it was almost banned by his officer but one of the officer he saw it and he was so impressed he was so impressed that he opposed opposed the ban on that he says no let him continue let him continue and the grand inauguration was in 1980 okay and uh, he got many award after that a postage stamp was made also a postage stamp was sorry children it was inaugurated in 1976 76 and in 1980 he got an award and after that the award get got in continuation because more and more public came to know about that collection he made and uh, it was beautiful because he put all his dreams his imagination into that and what was the name given to that the name given to his realm was a rock garden rock garden was in chandigarh and uh, in this book if you saw this sculptures what is this made of this is made of broken bangles if you see the color pictures of this one this is very beautiful is very beautiful and uh, way back way back in okay and after that he got recognized by united nation also the unesco body of the united nation they supported they supported his work and they agreed that they will make and they will carry an exhibition for 5 months known as realm of nature and it would be it would be shown in 
Switzerland, Belgium, France and Italy and all these parts of the Europe. All, all this part of the Europe. And uh, later, later the American and European authorities, they promoted him. They sponsored, uh, they sponsored to, sponsored him to carry it further, to and to extend his work. And later they added more land to that, which was almost forty acres of land. And there is more than two thousand, the more than two thousand statues in the rock garden now. Okay. And this article, the one we are, which we are reading in this book, this is an article written by Rinda Suri, which was published in Hindustan Times on 28th August 2005. Okay, when he was very popular to the world that time. And uh, that time he was 80 years old. But uh, next time he died in 2015. But his work, the rock garden, it is still there in Chandigarh. And uh, if you go to Chandigarh, if you go to have a look at that, you will be impressed. You will be impressed to see how the scrap, how the all the garbage things, the scrap things, can be anything, can be everything which you can lay your hand, can be a piece of art, if you have heart for the art. So once you see that, you will be impressed, because all of you have heart for that also. Because I have seen many children making beautiful piece of art from, uh, say, waste newspaper, waste ice cream, ice cream sticks, or broken wires. Can be anything. They make beautiful pieces. So that is raw art, okay, made from raw material where you don't need to have uh, where you don't need to have the training in art where you don't need to be an artist to make that art so children that was all okay that was all about this chapter and uh, once you read i suggest you to have read if you read it I'm very very sure you will enjoy it and things will be easy for you and if you read this chapter just visualize your piece of art you love okay can be in any form and just try to connect it things will be easy for you because anything we read anything we read if we connect it to something we see around us or we do we see we feel that will be easy for us to understand. So, why I'm asking you? Because this is children, English is not a subject. According to me, English is not a subject. This is a language which gives hand, which aids in understanding all other subjects. All other subjects you have to study. English, you only have to understand. So each and every chapter, there's a story which connects you to some reality. Connect yourself with that. Flow with it. And once you understand it, it will help you, the language will help you in understanding other subjects. And English will be, if you take it as a subject, then it will give you marks. And it will become your friend. Why it will become your friend? Because it will be scoring for you. It will add a beautiful marks in your total. So let this subject, let this language be your friend and let it assist in your other subjects. So this is all for today. Have a very good time. Tomorrow I'll come with another chapter with a beautiful poem. Till then, have a good time.